Top 10 Wednesday, and as the title says, I am talking about the books that I read as a kid. My 10 favorites, with an honorable mention thrown in. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm not wearing makeup, it's because I'm kind of throwing back to those days, and I didn't wear makeup. I actually never did my hair, even like this. The first time I wore pigtails willingly, I was like 18, but whatever! <laughs> Let's just get to it! First of all is my honorable mention, technically number 11, and that is the Shonen Jump magazine by Viz Comics. This magazine, I found this one first, and two months later I found this one, which is the one before it. This got me into manga, and I have almost 140 manga now, and I have hundreds more that I want to get, but these got me into it, and honestly, it's because I was watching Yu-Gi-Oh! at the time, and so I saw Yu-Gi-Oh!, and I bought it, and I got into Naruto, and One Piece, and I still found out Yu Yu Hakusho. Oh, I just got so much into manga. So yeah, that's number 11. And actually in the top 10, at number 10 is Strega Nona by Tommy DePaoli. Ignore the child's handwriting and cramp. This I got at the library sale. But this is my mother's favorite book. This is my mother's favorite author. All of her copies are in really nice condition and are all signed by the author. She's met him a gazillion times. And I remember her reading this to me and I remember reading it myself many, many times just because I love it. So I had to buy it and I had to make the list. So in number nine is The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. I read this before or around the same time I was reading The Lord of the Rings. Like the same year I finished The Lord of the Rings I read these. C.S. Lewis was best friends with J.R.R. Tolkien and I really kind of enjoyed them. I say kind of because the writing style isn't the greatest especially compared to Tolkien who's like description master and C.S. Lewis is not very good. Like battles. <laughs> yeah, but they had to make the list because I do love them. In fact, I kind of want to get multiple copies because there's this really nice bound up edition of all seven that's hardback from Barnes and Noble and they're collectible editions and I want it. Number eight is Cat Wings by Ursula K. Le Guin. Illustrations by S.D. Schindler. Schindler. I loved this book. I was big into cats. I got my first cat just after kindergarten and we didn't get one, we got two. We got Starbright and Ashley and I loved them to death and I just became obsessed with cats and I remember reading this and reading it like 20 million times from my school library. Number seven is Baby Blue Cat and the Whole Batch of Cookies by Ansley Pryor or Anshley Pryor. I don't know how to say that name. I, it's like a play on Ashley. But I loved this book. I loved this book for so long. I remember this was my favorite book, and then this was my favorite book, and then another book that's coming next was bef my favorite just before this one, but I loved, loved, loved this book because it was a cat. He was blue, one of my favorite colors. His mother was pretty, and he was kind of got into a lot of trouble like I did. I wasn't the greatest of kids. I was a troublemaker. But I loved this book so much, and I loved how it taught you to apologize something that I had trouble with for a long time. But it was really cute and I love it. Number six is The Chicken and the Duckling by V. Sutiev. Russian. Translated by Mira Ginsberg and pictures by Jose Ariago and Ariane Duzi. Dewey. Whatever. I learned to read with this book. One of the very first steps in reading is you memorize a book. Kids like repetition, a lot of repetition. And so they usually have you reread the same book over and over again. And then they get it memorized, especially smaller books. For Raven, it was the Chronicles of Narnia, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But for me, it was this. And so I had this memorized and I could read it before I could read, you know, normal words. And I was learning individual words from this book way back in the day. Like, this is one of my first first memories is sitting like when I'm three or four and my with me on one side and my brother on the other with my mom and my brother would play the duckling and I was the chick and we just loved it to death and my mom was so happy when we memorized it because she knew that meant we were getting closer to knowing how to read. Number five is the Jedi Apprentice series by Jude Watson. I love the 
Grizzly series so much, I have all but one of them. I can't find 14. I asked for it for Christmas, so I'm pretty positive I'm getting it. But I love Jude Watson. She, in case you missed my last top 10, I'll link that down in the doobly-doo. On there, my number one author that I purchased that's an auto-buy is Jude Watson, and it's because I loved Jedi Princess. I only read numbers one through seven when I was a kid, and then my and my brother couldn't afford to purchase it anymore, and we sold ours. But I've always loved the stories, and the new Star Wars coming out, and I ah, and now I've moved on to Jedi Quest and The Last of the Jedi. I just I love Jude Watson's Star Wars books. I own over 30 of her books. That's a lot of books. Number four is Daughter of the Force by Juliette Morillier or Morillier or however you say this lady's last name. She's Australian. I don't know how to say it. Daughter of the Forest I read when I was 12 and this book was so empowering to a little girl dealing with racism, sexism, bullying of every kind, de constant death threats. I didn't think I was pretty like Sorsha and all sorts of other things. This book taught me so much about life and so much about how you can change the world by doing something small and you can save people's lives by being yourself and about sacrifice and family and love and so much stuff. I love this book. It's one of my favorite books of all time. It's made a bazillion lists and tags and videos and I'm currently, as you can see, in the middle of rereading it because I love it so much and I just, I have to reread it all the time. I will be doing a book review on that whenever I finish, but it's hashtag a thon and I haven't read very many chapters today. Oops. Number three is the Harry Potter series by JK Rowling, and since this is pre-high school, I'm only including the first four. Sor Sorcerer's Stone, or Philosopher's Stone if you're not from the U.S., Chambers of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban, and the Goblet of Fire. I love the Harry Potter series. It is one of my favorites. I don't talk about it a lot because everyone talks about it and a lot of people list it as their favorite series or their favorite childhood series. It's not. It's not my favorite series. It's not my favorite childhood series, but it is phenomenal. It is one of the books that if you aren't a big reader, I would recommend that you read these. But I love them very, very much. They hold a special place in my heart. I really, really, really want to get the new paperback editions that are, like, so beautiful. I have the nice Percy Jackson ones, but I want the Harry Potter ones, and I don't know when I can afford it because it's $80. And, you know, for seven books, that's a hell of a lot of money. <laughs> that's a hell of a lot of money. Good gosh. In the number two spot, this may shock y'all if y'all know me, is The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings by J.R. Tolkien. This is my favorite series of all time. It ties with another series, but I can honestly say I didn't appreciate it all that much until I read The Silmarillion, which was in high school, and as I grew older and the movies came out. But it's not the most favorite thing that I read and the thing that I reread a bazillion times as a kid, which is why it's not number one. It's the only reason it's not number one. It's just that it's really, really wordy, and so I didn't want to reread them until recently, and I just finished rereading them, and I need to reread them more, and I think I will. Now that I'm an adult and a lot of things didn't go over my head, I didn't get bored this time, but as a 12-year-old, I got bored. In the number one spot, y'all probably don't know about this, but it is the Sonic the Hedgehog comics from Archie Comics. This volume holds number six through 80. This is the first one we got, number six. Not very good. The beginning, the comics were not what the rest of the comics are. I did these, taping stuff in here, we even have a book, and putting these comics all together. This is why I'm into manga. This is why I've recently got into Batman. This was one of the big things. We, me and my brother actually read this until high school. And then we started to see that the themes, they weren't as good as they were when I was younger. They dealt with a lot. One of my favorite comics, like individual comics, has this girl who's talking to her mother and how she's like, she's talking about her father and the girl's father died when she was like four. So she has no clue who her father is. And so she, she was like, tell me about my father. And she's like, well, he was this great warrior because back when we were at war with the humans, this human soldier, tracked me down, killed my friend, was going to beat, rape, and torture me to death, and your father killed him instead. And that's how we met. And you're like, wait, Sonic had stuff like that in it? Yes. Yes, it did. 
Sonic has dealt with all sorts of serious dark things. Oh, it was, oh, there's so many things, so many things. I love this series. I want all of them. There are bind ups now of the, like, of the five comics in each. And I want to get all of those. But yeah, those are my top ten books I read as a child. I'm sorry for being barefaced. I've had a bad breakout. We were staying at this hotel and it was a day's in and we didn't realize it, but it was in the ghetto with motels where most people were coming to have sex and it was scary. And our room, the bedding was filthy, like gross. You could tell and we had to sleep on it. And so I had breakouts like crazy and all the stress. Oh my goodness. Anywho, thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to see more. I have a book review coming on Friday that I have yet to film and write out. I need to do that. But I'm going to do that tomorrow. Alright! Good luck with your reading and let me know what you read as a kid. What was the thing that you read over and over again? And I'll see you next video. Bye! Get it out. Number nine is. What is number nine? Oh! I changed my list just before filming and I didn't write it down! Number eight is. I need to just pull that out before I do it. And this book is. was re. Wizzy Bizzy Bizzy Whip. Star Bright and Blue. Star Bright and Blue. That's the same guy. Number. I keep telling myself, stop putting up the numbers until you got the book in your life. Was my last one, right? Yes, obviously, since I own over 30 of her novels. 30 of those. They're not novels. Oh my, how am I gonna lift these guys? <laughs> oh my baby! Um, I tried to read these books to my brother, and I got through Philosopher's Stone. It was in Chamber of Secrets, but yeah, I can't read the entire novel to my brother. What's number two? Oh, tying with another series that I was not down there anymore. Why am I pointing?